My name is Andrew Futter. I'm an Associate Professor in International Politics at the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom. So my main argument is that the global nuclear order is being transformed by a new suite of advanced conventional technologies. Um, these are important in their own right, but when taken together, I think represent a possible sea change in the way we view nuclear weapons, understand nuclear threats and manage global nuclear order. These weapons span uh, a considerable spectrum and include developments in ballistic missile defences, um, advances in precision strike technologies, both global and regional, um, underwater drones, anti-satellite capabilities, uh, and finally a whole host of challenges and developments linked in with cyber. A lot of the central ideas that we hold about nuclear weapons, the so-called nuclear orthodoxy um, that surrounds them, was designed in a very different era, specifically the 1950s and 1960s. So I think there's a strong case for at least reassessing and rethinking about whether these same ideas to do with mutual assured destruction, nuclear deterrence, proliferation, crisis management and arms racing still hold true in a very different global context. Why is it interesting now? Because I think we're on the cusp of what I um, might go as far as to say is the third nuclear age, one that will be dominated by different types of predominantly non-nuclear technologies. So in my view it's important that we act now to at least begin thinking about how these dynamics will play out, what they mean, whether the types of frameworks that we developed in the past still remain fit for purpose and useful, um, and begin to think about how we mitigate and manage some of the worst risks that I see um, coming from this transition to a, to a third nuclear age. In reality, what has currently been deployed and what is ostensibly deployed for future threats in the Middle East, um, basically read Iran, um, is not that capable at the moment, but the threat is the spectre of what comes next in the future. Now, the idea behind missile defense in Europe probably depends on who you speak with. Um, in my personal view, it's as much about um, how you reassure allies in Europe that are as worried about um, the Middle East um, as they are about Russia. It's also about, it's also about extending NATO's footprint as well. It is conceivable, and people have argued, that missile defences specifically could play a role in a denuclearized world. This is Ronald Reagan's Star Wars dream, right, essentially. Um, but the real problem with missile defence is not so much the end game of what they can achieve, but it's the transitional period from where we are now to where we get to, and how you reassure people and how you maintain deterrence, stability and trust in an international system as you move away from nuclear weapons to one, for example, based on conventional weapons and defences. Missile defence could have a role to play in global nuclear disarmament and arms reductions, um, but it will be a very delicate um, way that it will have to be fixed.